Hey there, it's Harry from Step Daddy Barbecue. Brisket is one of my favorite competition categories. I cook it really well and won numerous awards. And uh, I am always trying to up my brisket game by finding new products uh, that can uh, improve my scores. I have uh, been hearing about a product that's been tearing up the competition circuit and has a somewhat of a cult following. So I'm so glad that Tim Dickey sent me some of his product here. He has a deep beef flavoring as well as a 180 brisket injection we're going to do a little brisket shootout today and uh, with beans and we're gonna try to cook a competition brisket show you how to trim it how to inject it how to season it in cooking in a pit and uh, do the flavor test at the end and then if it works out I'm gonna go shoot out against the uh, six commercial popular brisket injection video I shot earlier so stay tuned for this episode. We're going to take you through new heights with brisket injection and flavorings. Okay, we mix the uh, injection. I use uh, about two cups of water, about one pint, uh, and uh, about half a cup of the 180 brisket injection mixed with about a quarter cup of the deep beef. This is how the final product looks like. It's a little foamy. Give it a taste test here. It's got about the right amount of saltiness for a beef injection. Uh, I've tested quite a few and uh, like six uh, of the top ones in my previous YouTube video. This one has a, about a medium kind of saltiness, good beef flavor. We are removing the brisket. Uh, one very important safety tip is that uh, this little liquid here, called the purge, has a lot of pathogens. So never wash your meat in the sink. Just make sure that you just put this carefully in the trash. And you want to towel dry your brisket. Remove any excess purge. You never want to wash your brisket. You don't wash your meat in the sink ever because uh, that's one of the most dangerous things you can do in your kitchen. First thing we do is remove some of the uh, fat that's covering the uh, meat here so that we want to remove all the excess fat and the silver skin. This is a about 15-16 pound prime brisket. I'm doing is cutting away the fat. So on the brisket there's an eye of fat here which needs to come off. And what we want to try to do is we want to remove all the fat between the two muscles. Since this is a full pack of brisket, there is a flat and a point. And we just need to remove this little eye of fat, like so. And then run our knife through to get the fat out between the two layers of the muscle. One is a point, one is a flat. The point is where the burn ends come from. So we're going to create competition style burn ends, which are little morsels of beef heaven, perfectly cooked and perfectly rendered. And we're going to serve that uh, as part of a competition entry with slices from the flat and then cubes of burn ends from the point. We're also going to remove all the fat from the point so that we can create burn ends. So because uh, once we remove the fat, we can get the crust to set on the meat itself and create a good crust. And the crust is the secret to good flavor in your brisket. I'm shaving off all the fat from the side of the fat cap. I like to cook with the fat cap down and uh, meat side up. That's another three hour argument between pit masters as to how to cook brisket. But this is the way I've used to cook uh, brisket and I've won many first place awards. So if it works for me, who knows, it might uh, just work for you. Flip it over. I can see that the uh, fat is running down this layer here. And 
and uh, because I want to get maximum crust from my burn ends, I'm trimming up all of the fat between the point muscle and the flat muscle, like so. So I'm getting all the fat off the point muscle. And you can see that on the point, the meat kind of goes this way. So when I slice, I have to slice this way. And on this one here on the flat, the grains are the meat grain is running this way. So when I slice, I have to slice 90 degrees to the grain. So you can see from the different muscles that you have to slice your brisket against the grain 90 degrees so that it's tender. So on this one, I'm slicing this way. On this one, I'm going to have to be slicing sort of this way. Okay. It's kind of like this way. So it's going to be a different kind of cut. I'm going to cut 90 degrees. I'm going to finish trimming up this brisket and then we're going to begin the injection process. Brisket trim is complete. For competition trim, I like to remove all the uh, fat on both sides of the point. You can see it's uh, superbly marbled. This is a prime uh, brisket, and this is how the back looks like. So I'm going to get the I'm going to be able to get burn ends from both sides, and also on the flat, uh, I trim away all of the silver skin, all the excess uh, fat on it, and I like to leave the fat cap on so that it insulates the flat while it cooks. I'm going to be able to get some con contest grade slices right here in the thickest part. So I'm going to try to cook this to perfection. So. Sometimes on certain days, what I'll do is uh, rather than drape this over onto this side, uh, I will cut this piece off because uh, this little piece here is really not needed. So this comes off. And on this thin side here, uh, I sometimes cut this off. And on the back end, this little triangle is too narrow for my box, so I may trim it off. So depending on my mood, uh, I might do trim here. I'll trim here and I'll trim here. But for this one, since I'm cooking it at home, uh, I'm going to go and uh, kind of give it to my friends and neighbors. I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, this part on. But you get the idea. So we want to make maximum crust right here for the Mala reaction on the point, on the front and the back. And we trim away all of the silver skin and all of the fat from the top of the flat so that when you apply the product, the product is going to be able to touch the protein and fuse and get a fabulous flavor. We're ready to inject the brisket using uh, the uh, new injection I'm trying, the Smoky Oki. So what you do is you inject at 1 inch increments and uh, going diagonally about 30 degrees. And as you are pressing the plunger, you just ease the needle out slowly. That way it'll fill the meat with the injection and you want to cover every square inch so that the flavor is going to be evenly distributed into the meat. I'm injecting with the grain and if you ask most pit masters that's probably a three hour argument as to whether you go with the grain or against the grain. I've won a lot of first places injecting with the grain, so that's what I do. I'm going to get now some of the injection into the point area. And similarly with the flat, I'm going with the grain here. Carefully, covering every square inch of the meat. Taking care, of course, not to poke myself. This is a sharp needle. Get some uh, Slappy Daddy Championship beef rub on it. Uh, you want to shake it about, about yay high, so that it's nice and even. You don't want to be too, don't want to shake your your rub too low. That way, it has a better, more even application. And you want to apply enough of my rub until the bottom layer becomes opaque. I fine tune the rub to work that way. And once the bottom layer becomes opaque, by the covering of the rub, you stop. That's about the right amount of seasoning. 
And then don't forget to lift this up to the back side here. Same here, back side. The edges. This brisket is nicely seasoned and uh, ready to go into the pit. We're gonna smoke it until the crust sets, just like in a competition, and then wrap it in foil with some mop, and then cook it until it's probe tender, and do a taste test on the oaky injection and beef flavor. We're gonna start our fire on the uh, charcoal summit, and uh, it's a great pit to use with some uh, Jealous Devil, 100% hardwood charcoal, and uh, we're gonna use the charcoal starter from InstaFire, just two great products to try when you're at home and you wanna light your pits. All right, fire started up. Put the uh, apple on now. I bought a pan from Amazon that fits the, right here. So it makes it easier to clean and then catch the drippings as it drips. So you can try this tip if you like. It really works. Put the grid back on. Okay, we've taken the uh, brisket out of the pit and it's ready to be foiled now. Spray a little water. And the bark is set. I can tell because as I test the bark, the rub is not falling off. See, you see that? So you scratch it and it doesn't fall off. That means the bark is set. Put a little bit of beef broth here. Put a little bit of broth here to cook it. About what about one can is good. And at this point, if the crust falls off, that means that you know you've done it wrong because uh, the rub hasn't set or fused to the meat yet. And the mallet reaction is not complete. So right now, you notice that as I put in the liquid, the rub is not falling off. That's how it should be. The brisket is done and uh, I cook it until it's uh, probe tender. Uh, internal temperature can be anywhere within the range of about anywhere from 195 all the way to 210. So I don't worry so much about the temperature. I focus primarily on the feel. It's about 90% to do with the feel, maybe 10% about the temperature. So so long as you get your brisket into the right temperature range, uh, don't worry too much about the internal temp. And uh, you notice there's a hole here. I just probed it through with a little bamboo skewer or you can use a little instant read thermometer. It works just as well. This good looks good here. I'm going to defat it now. You use the defatter to uh, defat the jus and uh, just get the uh, fat to separate out. And uh, you have a two layers here and I have my jus. You always want to make sure that you taste it, make sure that uh, it's not too salty. That's about right. So we'll use that to dip our slices. All right, brisket looks really good. I'm gonna wet it a little bit with some jus. I'm gonna take my uh, grafted edge uh, slicer. I'm gonna run it through the uh, fat layer between the point muscle and the flat muscle to create some burn ends here. So uh, here's the uh, burn ends and what we do is we cut them into cubes and depending on how you feel you can place them any way you like. I'm just going to slice a few just for the example here. Okay. We usually want to take uh, one slice from each end. So we're looking at the brisket. We're going to take a slice from this side here. Looks pretty good. See a nice smoke ring. Super, super juicy. And uh, 
take another slice on this end to see which end looks better. And between this end and this end, color wise, I think it looks better on the right hand side. And take a slice here. All right, so I've sliced the brisket here from the uh, Smoky Oki injection. And uh, first observation is that there is a little bit of a staining. So you can see here a little bit of uh, the uh, liquid here. Uh, it's not too bad. If I rub it, it comes off. So it's not very mi not very major, but it can be easily fixed uh, with a little bit of jus. I'll show you what we do here. We paint it on like so. And uh, it kind of, you know, dissipates the, uh, so if you're using this injection uh, with the Oki beef base, Oki smoky beef base and the 180 brisket, uh, this is something that you might want to do. It's a little black belt trick here. You just take a little bit of your jus that you defatted using a defatter here, and then you just paint it over. I, I'm a perfectionist, so I, I prefer to have a brisket slice that has absolutely no blemish whatsoever. It's going to be pristine, a nice smoke ring on this side. It looks pretty good on this side. So now for the taste test. We're all very good. In, in a contest, what I would do is uh, I would trim off the fat here. I like to leave about a quarter inch of fat. So, and uh, I trim my briskets to the size of the box. So let's, let me just kind of illustrate here. Get a couple of slices here. Trim a little bit of fat. Stack them up. So I'm just going to simulate it. So if this was a box. We put some jus. So and you can put your burn ends either in the front or in the back. So depending on my mood, sometimes I put them in the front and put them in the back. So it gives you an idea. I'll include a picture of a completed first place box now with this video. So that's kind of how it looks like uh, when you get done. You can serve the you can serve the burn ends this way. Another style is to serve it this way. So kind of your call. Some some people sometimes I do it this way depending on my mood, and sometimes I do it with the other way up. I also sometimes I serve my burn ends at the back of the brisket. So if this was the brisket, I will serve the burn ends this way, kind of the back in the box. So imagine this is a a garnish. That's how I serve my brisket. All right, so now for the taste test, Let's see how it tastes like. My, my test of the uh, Smoky Oki, the 180, the uh, brisket injection, and then the uh, beef base. Okay, first of all, they hit you with a really strong, very strong beef flavor. Saltiness is about right for a competition brisket because uh, by this time, the judges have eaten, uh, you know, about three pounds of meat. It is the last entry, so it's a little salty. I would say uh, just a tad saltier than a normal eating biscuit, but that's perfectly fine if you're a com competitor. Uh, and uh, it's got a nice uh, beefiness to it. I'm not going to comment on the uh, texture because this is not a, a review about the uh, tech tenderness uh, or the uh, even the, the appearance, right? But it's more for the, uh, the, the injection. And uh, the technique of how to cook a competition brisket. So the point is absolutely spot on. I don't even need to cook it any longer in the pit uh, because the point is fully rendered. So you saw how the technique I told showed you how to remove all the fat from both sides of the point muscle. You get a wonderfully, beautifully rendered this little piece of beef heaven here. It's so juicy and moist and very, very tasty. All right, so that's the point muscle, which is the burn in. I'm going to try to eat the flat now closer. So I'm going to give the... Uh, the uh, Flat muscle a taste test here. So overall, 
the flavor is excellent. Uh, nice beefy flavor, very neutral, no chemical aftertaste. Just a very deep uh, beef flavor. This uh, injection, in my opinion, is uh, really ranks right up there with the top three of the six that I tested in my previous YouTube video. I'll leave a link uh, down below so you can watch uh, that video of the six uh, injection shoot up. So this uh, uh, Oki Smoky 180 brisket injection together with the beef base, definitely is a contender for a top uh, brisket injection. So what I guess I need to do now is now I gotta bring all the four that I like, which is the Cosmos uh, Smokehouse. Uh, we did the uh, Big Papa Kettle Prod. We also did the uh, Butcher's Prime. Now I have Oki Smoky 180 brisket to add to the mix. So we'll have to, I guess I have to do a shootout just to convince myself which is the next brisket injection I'm going to be using at my next uh, brisket comp. Hope you guys uh, like this video on how to cook a comp brisket from start to end. I'll show you all my little tricks and tips. And uh, we also did a review of the Oki Smoky 180 brisket together with the uh, beef base. Uh, top notch uh, brisket injection. Just a tad little issue with the uh, maybe the little bit of yellow on, on the uh, little bit of uh, coloring, but not not terribly bad because uh, we can clean it up quite easily by just applying some of the uh, little of the uh, mop. So all in all, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Remember, as Harry ups his game, what he learned, he's going to up your game. So stay tuned and come back and watch the next episode. Please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.